Hey guys, I'm Walt. I'm talking about comics and um, today um, I will start a new series of videos in which I try to find the, the gems, the lost gems um, of Vertigo Comics past. Vertigo Comics, uh, mostly of you will know them um, because of their super famous ongoing series like Preacher, Sandman, Transmetropolitan, um, a lot of series which really are are amongst the best in the medium um, but um, there are a lot of things um, especially miniseries one shots um, graphic novels that didn't quite had this cultural impact and um, you know in the 90s and 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 noughties um, where um, comics for for mature readers more sophisticated readers um weren't like the the most the hottest uh, things uh, ever like they are now you know with image comics being uh, so well regarded for its diversity well in the past uh, it was much more difficult to attract readers to certain kinds of stories and this is why i try to to find things that um that are still um, interesting for um, for modern readers that uh, hold ha hold up well over the time, and um, yeah, and maybe I will just uh, do a little introduction. What Vertigo Comics, if you don't know them uh, or know them only uh, in their modern um, edition that is going on right now, what Vertigo Comics was all about. Um, it started as an imprint, um, a family of titles, which were all supervised by Karen Berger. Karen Berger was um, one of the most important, or is still, um, one of the most important um, figures in modern comics. And I think she she is, um, after Stan Lee, she's probably the most important editor ever working in comics. She kicked off um, what was back then called the British Invasion. She imported um, British authors like, um, you know, you may have heard of them, Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, um, Grant Morrison. She was the first to give those guys um, their first writing uh, gigs. And uh, I mean, the list is endless. Of course, there is uh, Peter Milligan, Matt Wagner, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't write them down, uh, Warren Ellis, but you know, it's, it's, it's going on and on and on and on. Most great authors of the 90s and the noughties, uh, the biggest writing stars uh, were mostly British and they went mostly through Karen Berger's Vertigo imprint. So, um, how did this start? It was, I think, the beginning of 93 and of 92, I'm not quite sure about it. Um, when um, the 90s were a very specific uh, phase in, uh, in the history of comics, you may have heard about it or you may have lived through it. It was uh, mostly a collector's uh, market. Um, a lot of new publishers popped up. Um, a lot of things got relaunched. Um, so there was a big excitement about creating the new next big thing, the new next big universe, superhero universe, whatever. Um, and the most admired creators um, and hot creators were uh, pencilers, um, artists. Not so much the storytelling aspect was important, but the, um, you know, the visual um, innovation that was going on. And in this climate, there was um, an, a family of titles at DC Comics um, already established um, through Karen Berger and they were suggested for mature readers. Um, they weren't called Vertigo yet, but they were Vertigo already. They were like proto-Vertigo. It started with Swamp Thing, uh, then uh, Hellblazer um, was, was published. Um, I don't know the exact chronology, but Animal Man, Shape the Changing Man, uh, Books of Magic, Black Orchids. There was um, 
This was all part of the first genera of this first generation uh, Vertigo books, uh, and probably the most famous one from those days is Sandman, uh, which is still it's a, it's a perennial seller for for DC. They released it in I don't know a hundred formats, and they still they still keep it going. Uh, there are always like a special here, a special there, uh, a whole franchise, uh, namely Fables kind of um, spun out of, of Sandman. Uh, you have Lucifer, you have so many titles uh, that came out of this world of, of Sandman. Um, but, um, well, sorry, I, I got a little, a little bit carried away. Let's return back to what, what made those books very special and, and especially for me. So I was coming from from this, you know, Marvel, X-Men, overhyped relaunch after relaunch stuff. And, and I got tired, uh, like most people of my generation. I, I almost w went out of comics, quitted comics. And um, then I discovered this um, Sandman. It was still before uh, Vertigo launched. Uh, I think it was Sandman 31 or something like that. And I was fascinated. It's it was um, a whole new um, approach to comic storytelling, which was way more literary. And um, later on, I found out that that a lot of those guys who um, um, defined this new British way of writing um, were, of course, um, comic fans in their youth, but not they they didn't read comics only they they were like they also read literature they were were quite versed in in, in different arrays of culture and um, this is what made this uh, wave of um, of of vertigo comics so interesting it was still genre it was all dark fantasy or horror or um, you know mostly mostly those two uh, later on, uh, crime came onto uh, into into Vertigo, but in the beginning it was mostly horror and dark fantasy. But it didn't read like you know, um, it didn't read like it was written for children or that it was written for people who like elves. It was written for people who like literature and can accept that elves do play a role in it, and. Um, yeah, so this is why I became hooked on it and, and I read basically every Vertigo comic that came out. Um, later on, I, went, I, I really, I became like, you know, 17, 18 and I was interested in different things in life than comics. So um, I got out of comics after, I think shortly after Sandman and Shade um, ended. Shade was probably my favorite series uh, back in the day. And when those ended, I was like, okay. That's it for me. And when I returned to comics later on, um, around, I don't know, five years later, five or six years later, um, I was surprised. I mean, Image started, uh, the first Image things were, were going on already, the more interesting ones. Uh, but even like with my th third or second re-entry, uh, a few years ago, I always felt, yes, Image is great and, and Boom Comics and all those other um, publishers, but something about Vertigo um, is special and is missing uh, still today. I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but um, Karen Berger has, has now her own imprint at Dark Horse. It's called Burger Books. Um, the first releases are coming up this year. Um, and there is um, another imprint at IDW uh, by, uh, what's her name again? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm blanking. The second most important editor, Shelly Bond. Uh, Shelly Bond at Vertigo Comics, who also will set up her um, pop-up imprint there. Um, forgot the name but uh, it's at IDW so the vertical legacy will continue um, and now what do you do if you enjoy vertical comics but right now there are 
not a lot of them coming out and the stuff that is come released right now is not super good um you just go into the past and find um the gems of the past and um yes it was a super long uh introduction i'm sorry for that uh it will probably be a very short review now uh, i will kick this uh thing off with nevada it's um by Steve Gerber and um, drawn by Phil Winslate and um, yeah it's it's a typical I would say it's quite a typical um, vertigo book in that it's not very plot oriented um, so if you're someone who who needs the perfect resolution at the end of the story or who who needs like you know this whole little hooks in the story and uh, twists and whatever it's not for you um, it's not an image book it's a vertigo book which means that uh, the author is allowed to go crazy uh, with it and Steve Gerber did you may know Steve Gerber from his legendary Marvel runs in the 70s he did some Defenders, Howard the Duck, Man-Thing. So a lot of weirdo, horror, cosmic, psychedelic books. Um, and um, But he, he was never allowed. He was a little bit too early with his style. Um, he wasn't allowed to, to go crazy with his ideas. Um, and when Vertigo was already running, he was he wasn't like this hot new um, writer anymore. So it's kind of sad. If you read this, this reads like a, very much like a Grant Morrison comic. And you, I, I, I became aware that you really have to, you, you shouldn't be too early with, um, with your innovations and with your craziness. Because this by Grant Morrison would have been a hit but written by Steve Gerber, I think it's quite lost on most people. So what it is about, um, I will tell you now. It's, it's basically a story about the end of the universe. And we have um, a female hero who um, is able to, or is... A warrior fighting for for saving this universe our universe and she's um, she's a dancer she uh, is dancing with uh, this ostrich um, this giant um, this giant bird at um, Las Vegas casino so this is how the story starts she's just a dancer and Weird things start to happen. People are getting killed. Um, dubious characters are popping up and are entering um, Nevada's, that's her name, um, Nevada's life. And uh, slowly but surely, <laughs> uh, so it takes quite a few pages to really get into the groove, um, but it becomes evident that another reality uh, is bleeding through um, another dimension of existence um, has found its way into ours or Nevada's and um, it's entering um, our uh, this dimension and it's becoming increasingly dangerous and um, only one other character in this book um, a homeless guy is able to see this other dimension and warns Nevada about it um, and she is a bit reluctant <laughs> but it becomes obvious that the guy has uh, that the guy that does speak the truth and she embarks into onto this journey uh, through time and through other dimensions to save ours so I know it wasn't like the best pitch ever that I gave you and it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. I, I read it yesterday and it's still quite messy in my head. 
uh, a lot of stuff is happening all the time, but there, the, the red line um, which you're supposed to follow is not very obvious and not very easy to follow in the beginning, but you get, you get sucked into this world. Um, the, art, the art by Phil Winslet is fantastic. I loved it. Um, it's this kind of not super spectacular, but super detailed. Um, and um, when he wants to go crazy, he can do it art, you know? So um, there is a lot of people talking and um, just normal life things going on. But from time to time, it erupts into this craziness. Um, and Phil Winslade is always on top of his game. Um, I would have loved to, to uh, read this in an oversized format. I think this is the kind of art that would have benefited from it. But it's still nice. The coloring is super nice. And um, it's, it's a very... Um, it's a very visual comic, so yes, it's very talky. It's a lot of uh, a lot of dialogue, a lot of words in it, but it's similar to a Morrison comic where the the art um, is also speaking to you, like here in this um, in this panel here. So the story goes through the art into your head and does weird things with you. So, um, be prepared to be <laughs> here. She's reassembled from the fractured, her fractured self is reassembled here. So, be prepared to, to be taken over by a psychedelic experience while reading it. I was uh, maybe also a little bit drunk yesterday, I'm not sure, but I was really sucked into this cosmic battle and cos uh, um, cosmic philosophy that is that is also going on there are a lot of ontological questions um, um, asked all the time so it's it's about everything um, and it's about existence and it's about a female hero who tries to cope with everything um, and yeah, it's, it's a journey through crazy ideas. And if you enjoy Grant Morrison's writing, um, this is very close to it. It's $14.95. I think you can get it for better prices online. It's not very demanded. And I think it's one of DC's, uh, DC Vertigo's Lost Gems. So that was the first episode of it. If you have any suggestions what I should... Uh, check out or review next um, uh, be sure to um, comment uh, in the comment fields and um, yeah i hope you uh, enjoyed it and you will check out the next uh, until then see you bye bye